Do you wanna take your cats camping or go full time, but you're afraid you're gonna lose them during the trip? In this video, I'm gonna give you seven ideas how to prepare before you go, so that way you can reduce your anxiety, go to sleep at night, and everyone, including your fur babies, will enjoy the trip. Hi, hey, America from Radar Road Warriors, and we live full time in our RV traveling to job sites across the United States with our four cats. Two indoor, two feral cats that we converted into camper cats. We have additional cat videos in the description below, so if you're interested in learning how we converted them all, trained them, how we set up our RV, you definitely want to check that out. In this video, I'm going to give you the seven tips to prepare before you go, and you want to stay to the end because we're going to give you the story of how we royally screwed up and lost our cat 10 minutes before we were ready to pull out to go full time. Number one is to have your cat microchipped. It's really simple. You just go to the vet, let them know. They insert a little chip that's about the size of a piece of rice behind the cat's shoulders. And that way, if the cat ever gets lost or ends up at a shelter, they can wave a wand and they can read the chip. And then the company that you signed up for will contact you. You also have an online account. So if you ever move, you can update your information. Number two is have collars with your contact information on them. You can either have a medallion hanging off of it with it printed on there or print it right on the collar itself. Our cats don't wear collars inside. I bought these as a backup plan in case they're kind of acting crazy. I think something's up or you're trying to get out the door that I could put these on them. And then if someone found them, our contact information's on there. And they're also breakaway. So if they get up in a tree and something gets caught, they don't choke them, the collar will pop off. Number three is to get some type of GPS tracker for the collar or their harness, however you're going to use it. This one is the Whistle Go for dogs. I don't recommend it because it's very big. I was trying it out, but how I would use it is I would put it on their harness. I use this for Daisy and Diesel only. And then when I went and walked them, if they got off for some reason, I could track them. The only problem is they can still back out of these harnesses. And so if they're struggling, we have to just let the leash go and let them go. That way the tracker is still on them. Just do what's best for you and see what plan would work for your lifestyle if this is one of the ways you want to go. Number four is to limit door access. And you can do this two different ways. First, you can install a pet slash baby gate and get used to using it. So know what time your cats are active. My cats sleep all day and when it gets dusk out or between dusk and eight o'clock, depending on what time of year it is, they start looking at the door to see if they can get out of it. So if we are going in and out the door running errands before we leave, we'll pull the gate shut. That way when we come back in, they just can't dart out the door. And if they try to, they would get stopped by the gate. And the second way is if you have a rig with two outside doors, like a toy hauler layout, you can shut the cats behind one door and then the interior door shut, then always use the other door to go in and out of. That way when you come back, the cats don't even have access to run out the door. Number five is training and stop the behavior. I recommend SCAT. All it is is a can of air and it's automatic motion detector. So when the cat walks in front of it, it's just gonna spray air and it's not harmful. That way the cat gets scared and it stops doing whatever you don't want it to do. Either get up on the counter, paw at a door, whatever it is. So my cat, every single night she will go to the door and it's her routine and she just paws and she will paw for hours if you don't stop her. So all we do is put this canned air down on the floor and she's petrified of it. It has sprayed her so many times. We don't have to turn it on anymore. She just sees this and she runs. And when she walks by, she looks at it and then she darts to get away from it. Number six is stop the behavior before it starts. Never ever let your cat walk down the steps and go outside by themselves. Even if they're on a leash and harness, you always want to carry them down the steps that way, when the door opens, they don't get used to just darting out by themselves. Now, number seven and what you've all been waiting for, and you really need to watch this because we almost killed our cat, seriously, is make missing cat posters. You want to make the posters before you go. That way, if your cat does get out, you can just put these up around the campground or wherever you're at instead of taking the time to make it. You can be out calling your cat and trying to get it back. With the posters, you want to make sure they're in color, plus put the description of what your cat looks like on the poster. So in case someone wants to help you out and make copies of it and they're in black and white, someone can still see what the color of the cat is. Put a description of how the cat acts. I have it like if it's microchipped. And then you want to get these laminated 
you can do this at any office supply store. That way, if they're out in the rain, they're not gonna destroy or start curving in, you know, like this, and no one's gonna see them. And then take this file and save it to your phone. That way, if you're walking around the campground, you can text this out to somebody and say, have you seen this? Or put it on social media. And if you don't want your phone number out on social media, make a separate copy and just take your phone number off. Now, here's how we almost lost our cat. Picture this. It is the day, full-time launch day. We have everything ready. We have it all planned out. Every time before we go somewhere, we put the cats outside. We have two cages, two backpacks and we put the cats outside about a half hour before we go. We call this getting their meows out so we don't have to listen to them that much in the truck. And if it's the first day that we're going somewhere like on a multi-day trip, we'll give two or three of the cats, depending on how long the trip is, some sedatives to calm them down so they're not meowing a whole bunch because they're freaked out that they're going. So we gave Daisy and Diesel their sedatives. We put everyone in their cages. They were getting their meows out. We start loading up the truck and I load up two cages, one backpack, and I get to the last backpack, and there's no weight to it. Well, Diesel was in the backpack, and he got out. How he got out was that there are little zippers everywhere on this thing. And right now they're zip tied together, so they can't open, but when we would take them for little backpack rides, the zippers kept opening just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and we didn't check them. So when Diesel got in here, he just got a sedative, but he was still cat smart. He was still smart cat mind. He put his little paw in there, opened it up, and he ran away. And we're in a big open farm field here, and the crops weren't growing, and we didn't see him anywhere. And so we're looking like around, calling him. We couldn't find him. Steve looks up underneath the truck to see if he's there, doesn't see him. We think Diesel might be by the truck because he used to live next to a junkyard, and he would go to the junkyard all day and at dusk he'd come home at night. So I was not afraid that he wouldn't come home because that was his normal routine about six months before that we left to go full time. So we called Diesel, my husband's out looking for him and I decided, oh yeah, I remember about those missing pat cat posters. I should do that now. So I get them all done. We have a laminator, laminated them. I'm ready to go. I'm waiting for him to come home. I'm calling him at dusk because I know he should be waking up soon because when he's on this cat sedative, He's out for a good eight hours and he's not waking up. So there's no reason all day to be calling him like my husband was doing because I know he's sleeping hardcore. Well, at dusk when we called him, all of a sudden he came down from underneath the truck. Steve already looked there. So we're like, well, how did it, where was he at? How did he hide from us? He was up underneath the spare tire. The spare tire lays flat and he has a little dip. And so he went up underneath of there and hid just like his normal cat instincts. Earlier that day, Steve was saying, well, maybe we should just leave. And then if Diesel comes out, because we figured he was out by a tree or something hiding, my mom will tell us he's there and we'll come back and get him. And I was like, no, I think we should just stay. We know that his old routine is he'll come back at dusk. Well, if we would have left, he was up underneath that spare tire. He would have been bouncing underneath the truck on our trip. And we were going about eight hours away. At some point, he would have got up and got out of the spare tire either fell off on the road, at a gas station, whatever, and we would have lost him. So I'm very happy that he stayed. So tip to you is make sure you check very much inside of your vehicle. Know, you know what your cat likes to do. And you might want to stay put for that day waiting for your cat to come back so you don't lose them like we would have. Now a bonus tip for you. Never ever move your slides in and out without your cats being in a cage. If your slides are in, there's a gap back here. And if you start moving them out and your cat's hiding, you're gonna smush them. And the other thing, when we boondock, we won't put our bed slide out. So there's a big gap underneath the bed. And then that's the only way they can access. They can crawl underneath the bed and go up underneath and hide and we can't get them out. The only way we can get them out is to chase them by the vacuum. They're scared of the vacuum, so they come darting out, and that way we can put them in a cage and then get everything else ready to leave for the day. One thing that drives me crazy about watching other people's videos is when they don't leave links to the products they're talking about down below, and I can't find additional resources. So I put everything down below, so make sure you check out the description. And if you have great cat advice for other people, drop that down below too, so we can all learn from each other. You wanna watch our crazy adventure and see how 
the four camper cats and us navigate full-time RV living, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. It's time to go film, Squeak. Look at the camera, Squeak. Look up. See it? <laughs> oh, crap. Squeak's over there being bad. Oh, gosh. He likes to go in anything with a cubby hole. <laughs>